The next day was just as great as the first day. We went horseback riding in the morning, and in the afternoon, we rappled up some ginormous trees with the help with the help of the nature guys. By the time we got back to the cabins for dinner, we were we were all really tired again. After dinner, they told us we had an hour to rest, and then we were going to take a 15-minute bus ride to the fairgrounds for an outdoor movie night. I hadn't had the chance to write a letter to mom and dad and Via yet, so I wrote, a, I wrote one telling them all about the stuff we did, we did that day and the day before. I pictured myself reading it to them out loud when I got back, since there was just no way to, since there was just no way the letter would get them before I did. When we got to the fairgrounds, the sun was just starting to set. It was about 7:30. The shadows were really long and on the grass, and the clouds were pink and orange. It looked like. Someone had taken sidewalk chalk uh, and smudged the colors across the sky with their fingers. It's not that I haven't seen nice sunsets before in the city because I have silvers of sunsets between buildings, but I wasn't used to seeing so much sky in every direction. Out here in fairgrounds, I could I could understand why ancient people used used to think the world was flat and the sky was a dome that closed in on closed in on top of it. That's what it, that's what it looked like from the fairgrounds in the middle of this huge open field, because we were the first school to arrive. We go. We got to run around the field all we wanted uh, until the teachers told us it was time to lay out our sleeping bags on the ground and get good heating seats. We unzipped our bags and lay them down like picnic blankets on the grass in front of the giant movie screen in the middle of the field. Then we went to the row of food. Food trucks parked at the edge of the field to load up on snacks and sodas and stuff like that. There were concessions, concession stands there too, like at the at a farmer's market, selling roasted peanuts and cotton candy. And up a little farther, farther was a short row of carnival tape stalls. The kind, the kind where you, kind where you can win a stuffed animal if you throw a baseball into a basket. Jack and I both tried and failed to win anything, but we heard Amos won a yellow hippo and gave it to Cinema. That was the big scholarship that went around to the jock and the brainiac. From the food trucks, you could see the corn stalks in back of the movie screen. They covered about a third of the entire field. You could see the corn stalks in back of the movie screen. They covered about a third of the entire field. The rest of the field was completely surrounded by woods. As the sun sank lower in the sky, the tall trees at the entrance to the woods looked dark blue. The tall trees at the entrance to the woods looked dark blue. By the time the other school buses pulled into the parking lot, we were back in our spots on the sleeping bags, right smack in front of the screen. The best seats in the whole field. Everyone was passing around the snacks and having a great time. Me and Jack and Summer and Light and Maya played Pictionary. We could hear the sounds of the other schools arriving. 
a lot of laughing and talking of kids coming out, coming out on the field on both sides of us. But we couldn't really see them, though the sky was still light. The sun had gone down completely, and everything on the ground had turned had turned deep purple. The clouds were shadows now. We had trouble even seeing the patient light cards in front of us. Just then, without any announcement, all the lights at the ends of the field went on at once. They were like big, bright stadium lights. I thought of that scene in Close Encounters when the alien ship lands and they are playing that music. But of them. Everyone in the field started applauding and cheering like something great had just happened. Be kind to nature. An announcement came over to the huge speakers next to the stadium lights. Welcome everyone, welcome to the 23rd annual big movie night at the Boarwood Nature Reserve. Welcome teachers and students from MS342, the William Hart School, William Hips School. A big chair, a big cheer went up on the left side on the field. Welcome teachers and students for, from Clover Academy. Another show ran up, this time from the right side of the field. And welcome teachers and students from the Beecher Prep School. Our home group cheered as loudly as we could. We are thrilled to have you as our guests here tonight and thrilled that the weather is cooperating. In fact, can you believe what, what a beautiful night that this is? Again, everyone who everyone hooped and hollered. So as we prepare the movie, we do ask that you take a few moments to listen to this important announcement. The Broadwood Bro Nature Reserve, as you know, is dedicated to preserving our nature resources and environment. We ask that you leave no litter behind. Clean up after you. Clean up after yourselves. Be kind to nature, and it'll be kind to you. We ask that you keep that in mind as you walk around the grounds. Do not venture beyond the orange coins at the edge of the fairgrounds. Do not go into the cornfields on the woods. Please keep the free roaming to a minimum. Even if you don't feel like watching the movie, your fellow students may feel otherwise. So please be courteous. No talking, no playing music, no running around. The restrooms are located on the other side of the concession stands. After the movie is over, it'll be quite dark, so we ask, ask that all of you stay with your schools and you may in schools as you make your way back to your buses. Teachers, there's usually at least one lost party on big movie nights at Boardwood. Don't let it happen to you tonight. Movie presentation will be the sound of music. I immediately started clapping, even though I seen I had seen it a few times before, because it was Fia's favorite movie of all time. But I was surprised that a whole bunch of kids, uh, not from nature, booed and hissed and laughed. Someone from the right side of the field even threw a soda can at the screen, which seemed to surprise Mr. Dushman. I saw him stand up and look in the direction of the can's drawer, though I knew he couldn't see anything in the dark. The movie started playing right away. The stadium lights dimmed. Maria, the nun, was standing at the top of the mountain, twirling around and around. It had gotten chilly all of a sudden, so I put on my yellow Montauk hoodie and adjusted the volume on my hearing aids and leaned against my backpack and started watching. The heroes are alive. The woods are alive. 
somewhere along the boring part where the guy named Wolf and the oldest daughter are singing you are 16 going on 17, Jeff nudged me. Dude, I've got a pee, he said. We both got up and kind of hopscotched over the kids who were sitting or sitting or lying down on the sleeping bags. Summer waved as us. Summer waved as we passed and I waved I waved back. There were lots of kids from the other school walking around by the food truck. The food trucks playing the carnival games or just hanging out. Of course, there were a huge line for the toilet. Forget this. I'll just find the tray, said Jack. That's gross, Jeff. Let's just wait, I answered. But he headed off to the row of trees at the edge of the field, which was past the orange cones that we were specifically told not to go past. And of course, I followed him. And of course, we didn't have our flashlights because we forgot to bring them. It was so dark now. It was so dark now, and literally couldn't see ten steps ahead of us as we walked through the woods. Luckily, the movies movie gave off some light. So when you, when we saw a flashlight coming toward us out of the woods, we knew immediately that is that it was Henry Miles and Honest. I guess they hadn't wanted to wait online to use the toilets either. Miles and Henry were still not talking to Jack, but Amos had let go of the war a while ago, and he nodded hello to us as they passed by. Be careful of the bears, shouted Henry, and he and Miles laughed as they walked away. Amos shook his head at us like Amos shook his head at us head at, Amos shook his head at us like don't pay attention to them Jack and I walked a little farther until we were just inside the woods then Jack hunted around for the perfect tree and finally did his business though it felt like he was taking forever the woods were loud with strange sounds of and chirps and croaks, like a wall of noise coming out of the trees. Then we started hearing loud snaps, not far from us, almost like captain pops that definitely weren't insect noise, noises, as far away and far away like in another world. We could hear raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Oh, that's much better, said Jack, jipping up. I, now I have to pee, I said, which I didn't did on the nearest tree. No way I was going farther in like Jack did. Do you smell that? Like firecrackers, he said, coming over to me. Oh yeah, that's what that is. I answered, jipping up. Weird. Let's go. I don't know. We headed back the way we came. Uh, in the direction of the giant screen. That's when we walked straight into a group of kids. We didn't know. They just come out of the woods doing stuff I'm sure they didn't want their teachers to know about. I could smell the smoke now. The smell of both firecrackers and cigarettes. They pointed a flashlight at us. There were six of them, four boys and two girls. They looked like they were in the seventh grade. What school are you from? One of the boys called out. Teacher Pratt. Jack started to answer when all of a sudden one of the girls started screaming. Oh my god, she shrieked, holding her hand over her eyes like she was crying. I figured maybe a huge bob had just flown into her face or something. No way, one of the boys cried out and he started flicking his hand in the air like he had just touched something hot and then he covered his mouth. No freaking way, man, no freaking way. All of them, all of them started half laughing and half covering their eyes now, pushing each other and 
cursing loudly. What is that? said the kid who was pointing the flashlight at us. And it was only then that I realized that the flashlight was pointed right at my pa- at my face. And what they were talking about, screaming about, was me. Let's get out of here, Jack said to me quietly, and he pulled me by my sweatshirt, sweatshirt sleeve and I started walking away from them. Wait, yelled the guy with the flashlight, cutting us off. He pointed the flashlight right, into my, right in my face again, and now he was only about five feet away. Oh man. Shaking his head, his mouth flew wide open. What happened to your face? Stop it, Eddie, said one of the girls. I didn't know we were watching Lord of the Rings tonight. He said, look, guys, it's glowing. This made his friends hysterical. Again, we tried to walk away from them, and again, the kid named Eddie cut us off. He was at least a head taller than Jack, who was about a head taller than me. So the guy looked huge to me. No, man, it's alien, said one of the other kids. No, man, it's an orc, laughed Eddie. Pointing the flashlight in my face again, this time he was right in front of us. Leave him alone, okay? said Jack, pushing the hand holding the flashlight away. <coughs> Make me, answered Eddie, pointing, pointing the flashlight in Jack's face now. What's your problem, dude? said Jack. What's your problem, dude? said Jack. Your boyfriend's my problem. Jack, let's go, I said, pulling him by the arm. Oh man, he talks, screamed Eddie, shining the flashlight in my face again. Then one of the other guys threw a firecracker at our feet. Jack tried to push push past Eddie, but Eddie shoved his hands into Jack's shoulder and pushed him hard, which made Jack fall backward. Eddie screamed to one of the girls, look, he said, uh, stepping in front of Jack and holding my hands up in the air like a traffic cop. You're a lot smaller than you guys. Are you talking to me, Freddy Krueger? I don't think you want me you want to mess with me, you ugly freak, said Eddie, and this was the point where I knew I should run away as fast as I could, but Jack was still on the ground and I wasn't about to leave him. You dude, said a new voice behind us. What's up, man? Eddie spun around and pointed his flashlight toward the voice. For a second, I couldn't believe who it was. Leave them alone, dude, said Amos with smiles and Henry, right behind it, says who? said one of the guys with Eddie. Just leave them alone, dude. Amos repeated calmly. Are you afraid too? said Eddie. They are, they are all a bunch of freaks, said one of, the, one of his friends. Amos didn't answer them, but looked at us. Come on, guys, let's go. Mr. Tushman is waiting for us. I knew that was a lie, but I helped Jack get up, and we started walking over to Amos. Then, out of the blue, the Eddie guy grabbed my hood as I passed by him, yanking it really hard. So I was pulled backward and fell flat on my back. It was it, it was a hard fall, and I hurt my elbow pretty bad on the rock. On the rock, I couldn't really see what happened afterward, except that Amos rammed into the Eddie guy like a monster truck. They both fell down to the ground next to me. Everything got really crazy after that. Someone pulled me up by my, my sleeve and yelled run and someone else screamed get them at the same time and for a few seconds I actually had two people I actually had two people pulling the sleeves of my sweatshirt in opposite directions. I heard them both cursing until my sweatshirt ripped and the first guy yanked me by yanked me by my arm and 
started pulling me behind him as we run, ran, which I did as fast as I could. I could hear footsteps just behind us, chasing us, and voices shouting and girls screaming. But it was so dark, I didn't know whose voice, whose voices they were. Only that everything felt like we were under underwater. We were running like crazy, and it was pitch black. And whenever I started to slow down, the guy pulling me by my by my arm would yell, "Don't stop!" Voices in the dark. Finally, after what seemed like a forever running, someone yelled, I think we lost them. Amos? I'm right here, said Amos' voice, a few feet behind us. We can't stop. Miles yelled from farther up. Jack, I yelled. Who? said Jack. I'm here. I can't see a thing. Are you sure we lost them? Henry asked, letting go of my arm. That's when I realized that he had been the one who was pulling me as we ran. As we ran, yeah. Shh, let's listen. We all got super quiet, listening for footsteps in the dark. All we could hear were the crickets and frogs and our own crazy panting. We were out of breath, stomachs hurting bodies bent over our knees. We lost them, said Henry. Whoa, that was intense. What happened to what happened to the flashlight? I dropped it. How did you guys know? said Jack. We saw them before. They looked like jerks. We just rammed into him. I said to Amos, I know right? laughed Amos. We didn't even we didn't even see it coming. Said Miles. He was like, Are you afraid too? And we were like Bam, said Jack. Bam, said Amos, throwing a fake punch in the air. But after I tackled him, it was like, run. Amos, you shimok, he's ten times bigger than you. But after I tackled him, it was like, run Amos, you shimok, he's ten times bigger than you. And I got up and started running as fast as I could. We all started laughing. I grabbed the Augie and I was like, run, said Henry. I didn't even know it was you pulling me, I answered. That was wild, said Amos, shaking his head. Totally weird. Your lip is bleeding, dude. I got in a couple of good punches, answered Amos, whipping his lip. I think they were seventh graders. They are huge. Losers. Henry shouted really loudly, but we all... Shushed, shushed him. We listened for a second to make sure no one heard, had heard him. Where the heck are we? Asked Amos. I can't even see. I can't even see the screen. I think we are in the cornfields. Answered Henry. Dude, we are in the cornfields. Said Miles, pushing the cornstalk at Henry. Pushing a cornstalk at Henry. Okay, I know exactly where we are," said Amos. "We have to go. To, we have to go back in this direction. That'll take us to the other side of the field." "Yo, dude," said Jack, hand high in the air. "That was really cool of you guys to come back for us. Really cool. Thanks. No problem," said answered Amos, high fiving Jack, and then Miles and Henry high fived him too. "Yeah, dude. Thanks," I said. Holding my palm up like Jack just had, though I wasn't sure if they high-fived me too. Amos looked at me and nodded. It was cool how you stood your ground, little dude. He said, high-fiving me. Yeah, Augie okay, said Miles, high-fiving me too. You were like, were li <laughs> littler than you guys. Uh, I didn't know what else to say. I laughed. Very cool, said Henry. And he high-fived me, too. Sorry, I wrecked your sweatshirt. I looked down, and my sweatshirt was completely torn down the middle. One sleeve was ripped off, and the other was so stretched out, it was hanging down to my knees. Hey, your elbow's bleeding, said Jack. Yeah, I shrugged. It was starting to hurt a lot. 
You came, said Jack, seeing my face. I nodded. Suddenly, I felt light crying. I was trying really hard not to do that. Wait. Your hearing aids are gone, said Jack. What? I yelled, touching my ears. The hearing aid band was definitely gone. That's why I felt like I was underwater. Oh no, he said, and that's when I couldn't hold it anymore. Everything that had just happened kind of hit me, and I couldn't help it. I started to cry, like big crying, what mom would call the water rocks. I was embarrassed. I hid my face in my arms, but I couldn't stop the tears from coming. The guys were really nice to me, though. They patted me on the back. You're okay, dude? It's okay, they said. You're one brave little dude, you know that? Said Amos, putting his arm around my shoulders. And when I kept on crying, he put both his arms around, my, around me like my dad would have done to let me cry. Both his arms around me like my dad. The end parallel scar. We backtracked through the grass for a good time minutes to see if I could find my hearing aids, but it was way too dark to see anything. We literally had to hold on to each other's each other's shirts and walk in single file so we wouldn't trip over one another. It was like black ink had been pulled all around. This is hopeless, said Henry. They could be anywhere. Maybe we can come back with a flashlight, answered Amos. No, it's okay, I said. Let's just go back. Thanks, thanks though. We walked back toward the cornfields and then cut through them until until the back of the giant screen came into view. Since it was facing away from us, it was facing away from us. We didn't get any light from the screen at on screen at on at screen at all until we walked around the edge of the woods again. That's where we finally started seeing a little light. There was no sign of the seventh graders anywhere. Where do you think they went? said Jack. Back to the food truck, said Amos. They are probably thinking we are going to report them. Are we? asked Henry. They looked at me. I shook my head. Okay, said Amos. But little dude, don't walk around here alone, okay? If you need it, if you need to go somewhere, tell us and we'll go with you. I nodded. As we got closer to the screen, I could hear High on a hill was a lonely get old dirt and could smell the cotton candy from one of the concession stands near the food truck. There were lots of kids miling around in this area, so I pulled what was left of my hoodie over my head and kept my face down, hands in pockets. As we made our way through the crowd, it had been a long time since I'd been out without my hearing aids, and it felt like I was miles under the earth. It felt like that song Yolanda used to sing to me, ground control to major Tom, with circuits that there is something wrong. I did notice as I walked that Amos had stayed right next to me, and Jack was close. Sleep. Then they came out. They came out of. Then they came out of the narrow valley, and at once she saw the reason. There stood Peter and Edmund and all the rest of Aslan's army, fighting desperately against the crowd of horrible creatures whom. She had seen last night, only now in the daylight. They looked even stranger and more evil and more deformed. I stopped there. I'd been I had been reading for over an hour and sleep still didn't come. It was almost 2 a.m. Everyone else was asleep. Everyone else was asleep. I had my flashlight on 
I had my flashlight on under the sleeping bag, and maybe the light was why I couldn't sleep, but I was too afraid to turn it off. I was afraid of how dark it was outside the sleeping bag. When we got back to our section in front of the movie screen, no one had even noticed we had gone. We had been gone. Mr. Tushman and Miss Robin and Summer and all the rest of the kids were just watching the movie. They had no clue how something bad had almost happened to me and Jack. They had no clue how something bad had almost happened to me, Jack, me and Jack. It's so weird how they can be, how you could have a night that's the worst in your life, but to everybody else, it's just an ordinary night. Like on my calendar at home, I would mark this as being one of the most horrific days of my life. This and the day Daisy died. But for the rest of the world, this was just an ordinary day. Or maybe it was even a good day. Maybe somebody won the lottery today. Amos, Miles, and Henry brought me and Jack over to, to where we'd been sitting before with Summer and Maya and Light. And then they went and sat where they had been sitting before with Cinema and Sarah and their group. In a way, everything was exactly as we had left left it before left it before we went looking for the toilet. The sky was the same. The movie was the same. Everyone's faces were the same. Mine was the same. But something was different. Something had changed. I could see Amos and Miles and Henry telling their group what had just happened. I knew they were talking about it because they kept looking over at me while they were talking. Even though the movie was still playing, people were whispering about about it in the dark. News like that spreads fast. It was what everyone was talking about on the bus ride back to the cabins. All the girls, even girls I didn't know very well, were asking me if I was okay. The boys were talking about getting revenge on the group of 7th grader red jocks. Trying to figure out what school they were from, I wasn't planning on telling the teachers about my about any of what had happened, but they found out anyway. Maybe it was a torn sweatshirt and the bloody elbow, or maybe it's just that teachers hear everything. When we got back to the camp, Mr. Tushman took me to the first aid office, and while I was getting my elbow cleaned and bandaged up by the camp nurse, Mr. Tushman and the camp director were in the next next room talking with Amos and Jack and Henry and Miles, trying to get a description of the troublemakers. When he asked me about them a little later, I said I couldn't remember their faces at all. Which wasn't true. It's their faces that I kept seeing every time I closed my eyes to sleep. The look of total horror on the girl's girl's face when she first saw me. The way the kid with the flashlight, Eddie, looked at me as he talked to me like he hated me. Like a lamb to the slaughter. I remember that saying that ages ago, but tonight I think I finally got what I meant. Mom was warning for me mom was waiting for me in front of the school along with all the other parents when the bus arrived. Mr Tushman told me on the bus ride on the bus ride home that they had called my parents to tell them there had been a situation the night before but that Everyone was fine. He said the camp director and several other counselors went looking for the, the the hearing aid in the morning while we were while we all went swimming in the lake. But they couldn't find it anywhere. Broad world it reimbursed us the coast reimbursed us the coast of the hearing aids, she he said. They felt bad about what happened. I wondered if Eddie had taken my hearing aids. 
with him as a kind of souvenir, souvenir as something to remember the, the orc. Mom gave me a tight hug when I got out of the bus, but she didn't s- but she didn't slam me with questions like I thought she might. Her hug felt good, and I didn't shake it off like some other kids were doing with their parents' hug. hugs. The bus driver started unloading our duffel bags, and I went to find mine while Mom talked to Mr. Tushman and Miss Robin, who had walked over to her. As I rolled my bag toward her, a lot of kids who don't usually say anything to me were nodding hello or patting my back as I walked by them. Ready? Mom said when she saw me. She took my duffel back, and I didn't even try to hold on to it. I was fine with her carrying it. If she had wanted to carry me on her shoulders, I would have been fine with that too, to be truthful. As as we started to walk away, Mr. Tushman gave me a quick, tight hug, but didn't say anything. Home. Mommy and I didn't talk much the whole walk home, and when we got to the front stop, I automatically looked in the front bay window because I forgot for a second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like always. Perched on the sofa with her front paws on the windowsill, waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as, it, as, soon as we did, Mom dropped my duffel bag and wrapped her arms around me and kissed me on my head and on my face like she was breathing me in. Breathing me in. It's okay, Mom. I'm fine. I sat smiling. She nodded and took my face in her hands. Her eyes were shining. I know you are, she said. I missed you so much, Huggy. I missed you too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she was stopping herself. Are you hungry? She asked, starving. Can I have a grilled cheese? Of course, she answered. And immediately started to make the sandwich while I took my jacket off and sat down at the kitchen counter. Where's Fia? I asked. She's coming home with Daddy today. Boy, did she did she miss you? Augie, okay, Mom said, yeah, she, she would have liked the nature reserve. You know what movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about. She answered. Well, except for last night, I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed. I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours. That awful part lasted one hour. Don't let them take that away from you, okay? I know, I nodded. Did Mr. Tushman tell you about The hearing aids? Yeah, he called us this morning. Was that mad? Because they they are so expensive? Oh my gosh, of course not, Augie. He just wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us. And that you don't get those thugs ruin your trip. I kind of laughed at the way she said the words thugs. Why? She asked. Thugs. I teased her. That's kind of an old-fashioned word. Okay, jerks, morons, in bad styles, she said, flipping over the sandwich in the pan. Cretinos, as my mother would have said. Whatever you want to call them, if I saw them on the street, I would... She shook her head. They were pretty big, Mom, I smiled. That was greater, I think. She shook her head. Stephen's greater. Mr. Tushman didn't tell tell us that. Oh my goodness. Did they tell you about how Jack stood up for me? I, I said. And Amos was like, bam. He rammed right into the leader. They both crashed to the ground. Like in a real fight. It was pretty awesome. Amos' lip was bleeding and everything. He told us there was a fight. But she said, look.
looking at me with her eyebrows raised. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just so grateful. Even Amos and Jack are are fine. When I think about what could have what could have happened, she tra trailed off, flipping the grilled cheese again. My Montacuri got totally shred shredded. Well, that can be replaced. She answered. She lifted the grilled cheese onto the onto a plate, and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate chocolate milk, please. I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do it that special way you make it with the forks? How did you and Jack end up at? Edge of the woods in the first place, she said, pouring the milk into a tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom. I answered, my mouth full. As I was talking, she spooned in the chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms, real fast. But there was a huge line, and he didn't want to wait. So we went toward the woods to pee. She looked up at me while she was whisking. I know she was thinking we shouldn't have done that. The chocolate milk in the glass now had a two-inch fr fr froth on the top. On top, that looks good, Mom thinks. And then what happened? She said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of the chocolate milk. Is it okay if I don't take about it anymore? Right now. It, I don't talk about it anymore right now. Oh, okay. I promise I'll tell you all about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you all every detail. I just don't want to have to tell the whole story over and over, you know. <clears throat> I finished my sandwich in two more bites and gulped down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled this that sandwich. Do you want another one? She said. I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my head. Mom, am I always gonna have to worry about jerks like that? I asked. Like when I grew up, is it always gonna be like this? She didn't answer right away, but took my plate and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed them with water. There are always gonna be jerks in the world, Augie. She said. Looking at me, but r I really believe, and Daddy really believes that there are more good people on this earth than bad people, and the good people watch watch out for each other and take care of each other, just like Jack was there for you, and Amos and those other kids. Yeah, Miles and Henry. I answered that they were awesome too. It's Weird because Miles and Henry haven't even really been very nice to me at all during the year. Sometimes people surprise us," she said, rubbing the top of my head. I guess. Want another glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good," I said. "Thanks, Mom. Actually, I'm kind of tired. I think I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me, Babu. By the way." You got my note," she smiled. "I slept with him both nights." She was about to say something else, and when her cell phone rang, and she answered, she started beaming at as she listened. "Oh my goodness, really? What kind?"